Hi, I'm Al Bundy. Welcome to a special edition of Meet the Leaders here at the New Jersey State Assembly, brought to you by Altis USA. We're here talking to legislators about what's going on here in Trenton. Talk to me a little bit about what's going on with you, Chris Bateman, our state senator. Uh, tell me about your district. Uh, it's the 16th legislative district, which covers parts of Somerset, parts of Hunterdon, Princeton, and Mercer, and South Brunswick and Middlesex County. Well, you got a lovely area down there. And Beautiful area. Now, one of the things people are talking about trying to make the state more affordable. Absolutely. A lot of talk about regionalization, shared service. I understand Princeton Borough. Princeton made it happen. Kind of a model. Uh, can it happen other places? It can. And um, obviously, I was very pleased with the report that came out with Senator Sweeney had led the committee um, on how we can make New Jersey more affordable. And we talk about shared, more shared services, we talk about more regionalization, cut down some of the school districts, uh, renegotiate some of the benefit packages. Right now there's a platinum package, we could uh, renegotiate to a gold package, which would be outstanding benefits, it would save us billions of dollars. But we need to make New Jersey more affordable. Princeton you know, took the big step, Princeton Borough and Princeton Township several years back had the third vote it took three times on the ballot to uh, approve a um, consolidation now is it still is it working I mean people yeah, I, I think it's working very well and they've saved a lot of money I don't know exactly how much they've saved but if you think about it there was a lot of duplication of services and you had you had Princeton um, borough right in, surrounded by Princeton Township so it made a lot of sense and so I think that you know when you can eliminate positions obviously by attrition and uh, you can save money and you know People want to stay in New Jersey, but, but it's becoming unaffordable. And it, so. and it, you have both the young and the old thinking about leaving New Jersey. One of the things is property tax. I mean, what can we do to reduce the property tax? Well, some of the things that we looked at in this report, obviously, consolidation services, regionalization, will help save. I mean, right now we have two main layers of government. You have your local government, you have your county government, you have your state government, you have your school board. I mean, it's too much. Mm -hmm. It's too much. And, you know, we kind of evolved as a home rule state. And, you know, in the past, every town wanted everything. We can't afford to pay for everything now. I mean, every town doesn't need, you know, uh, you know, a police department. I mean, you can consolidate that. Every town doesn't need engineers and outside consultants. I mean, there are areas that are duplication, and I think that we need to cut the size of government because, you know, it's not a revenue problem. It's a spending problem in New Jersey. And so you think we also need to cut spending? Absolutely. We need to cut spending. And, you know, every time we have more revenue, it seems like, where does it go? It doesn't go to, you know, relieving the taxpayers of the burden. I mean, it goes to new programs. It goes to, you know, a lot of the black hole down here, you know. A lot of the governors in the past have raided a lot of the, you know, the environmental accounts and, you know, the TTF, transportation funds. I mean, we need to, you know, show the taxpayers that we really do care and we are trying to lower taxes. Help me a little with this idea of minimum wage there. I thought there was already some cutouts, already yes. had been made some concessions. Uh, to make, make sure you help the hospitality industry especially. Um, but yet, we don't have a 15 minimum wage. What do you think? Well, I think that it's going to happen, and I think that it should be phased in. I really think that the market should dictate the raises. But no question, you know, we're all for people making more money. But we also don't want to put the small businesses out of business. And you know, you're talking about one level. If you, if you raise the income for that level, the minimum wage is going to have an impact going up. And mm. so the people who are above them are going to want raises. And, you know, you have to have cutouts because, you know, the farm industry, the agriculture industry, a lot of industries, you know, count on, you know, labor, uh, you know, high-intensity uh, labor. And, you know, they can't afford to just keep paying more and more as minimum wage. So, you know, I, I'm a strong believer in the private sector should really dictate it. But it hasn't happened, so we need to step up. But you have to have a phase in, no matter what you do. You have to have cutouts and you have to have a phase in. Mm. Um. Certainly, fares keep going up. People still unhappy with New Jersey Transit trying to be on time. Uh, where are we at? Are we making some progress uh, to straighten out some of the problems with New Jersey Transit? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, there's a bill up in the Senate today which will reform the whole structure of New Jersey Transit, which will give uh, more appointments, will make more transparent the agency where their money's going because, yeah, it's an embarrassment in New Jersey Transit and we need to get our handles around it. It's not just this governor, it's previous governors that kind of let them run, run them amok themselves and we need to have, you know, more accountability, more transparency and, you know, we just can't keep raising the fares because we're raising the fares and the service is getting worse. It doesn't make any sense. 
So we have some legislation. I know Senator Weinberg, Senator Kane have worked very hard on, on revising the whole New Jersey Transit Board and to have more input from citizens and have you know more transparency, have more meetings when people can come to it to voice their concerns. So I think hopefully it's going to take time. You'll see an improvement with this legislation. Finally, I thought we were making headway on the legalization of marijuana, or recreational marijuana, because we already have medical marijuana. But at the same time, I thought there was a commission set up, but I hear there's a lot more discussion that needs to go on. Where are you at with this discussion? Well, obviously, the governor wants one tax rate. I think he wants a tax of 24%. Now, is this really all about just making money, or is it... Well, part, part because, you know, there's a lot of impact. Oh, there is. And, and with this legalization. Yeah, I mean, part of it is revenue raiser, but also another one is, you know, I'm not sure we should be prosecuting individuals where they have a criminal record for a small, you know, amount of marijuana. But I'm also a municipal prosecutor, so I have real concerns about legalizing it because we don't have the structure in place to really test the individuals when they're high on marijuana. You have to bring in a drug recognition expert. Not every town has one. And now you're talking about adding costs to towns where we're trying to go the opposite direction. So, you know, not every town is in a position to be able to prosecute individuals who, who drive it high. So, you know, coming from a municipal prosecutor perspective, I have real concerns about it. That's one. We shouldn't do it just for the revenue. I mean, yeah, if we want to help people out with expungements and make certain that people get a break and that they don't have a criminal record, I'm all for that. But I think we have to proceed very carefully. And, you know, more and more statistics are coming out of Colorado that their, their crashes have gone up. They've had troubles with people, you know, smoking more and more. A lot more social issues Absolutely, and problems, absolutely. Right? So, you know, you know, and I'm glad that we just didn't jump into it. And I know, listen, Senator Scateri has good intentions. He's worked very hard on this. But we have to make certain that we do it right. And, well, know, so I know that one of your colleagues, Senator Rice, is pushing back just as hard. Absolutely. And, you know, so right now they don't have the votes, which is good, because, uh, you know, the, the process has to work. And we're not ready. We're not ready for the big time yet, I don't think. So I'm all for expanding medical marijuana. That has worked out well. They've expanded not only the, the diagnosis on which individuals can have it, but it's more available and more accessible to individuals, which is good. Senator Bateman, we're going to stop right here. Okay. I want to thank you so much for joining us on this special edition of Meet the Leaders at the New Jersey State Capitol. Always a pleasure.